What's up guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are doing highlights on short pixie hair. So stay tuned. All right guys, I am really excited for this video because I have a feeling that this is something that either one, scares the heck out of you, or two, freaks you out a little bit. If you've ever had a client that came to you and maybe they had short hair or like a pixie cut and they're like, I wanna add in some highlights or I just want a little bit more dimension in my color and you immediately freaked out. And the reason why I know this is because that used to be me. I used to be so scared to do highlights or um, any kind of dimension on short pixie hair because I was afraid it was gonna look like a grandma or it was gonna look like splotchy cheetah spots. And trust me, nobody wants that. So I came up with a technique that is really simple, really easy, and something that's a lot more modern without any cheetah spots. So I'm gonna share with you guys today how you can achieve a highlighted look and how you can do highlights on somebody who has really short pixie hair, super easy, and something that blends really nice in the side and blends in that back so that you don't get that spotty look. So let's go. All right, so this is our before. As you guys can see, we've got a lot of depth in there. She hasn't had it highlighted in a while. And obviously, when you have short hair, it has to be maintained just a little bit more often than long hair can go. So we're going to brighten her up, definitely get rid of this black hole going on. And I'm really excited to just give her a lot more dimension and give her some more fun color to play with. All right, so we are gonna mix up her lightener and I'm gonna be doing Wella Blondor with about 30 volume and of course we will use Olaplex as always. And so we're gonna go in, like I said, probably with some highlights and more so baby lights, especially when it comes to around the sides. So um, I'm just gonna mix up my lightener and we're gonna get started. All right, so I just finished mixing and one little tip that I wanted to give you guys was I always mix with just like a regular brush, but then when I go to apply, I use a clean brush. So when I take it over to the bowl, we've got a nice clean brush. That way there's not a bunch of stuff all over that. And then I just kind of leave a foil out here and I leave the brush here in the back room so I can come back and remix or have my assistant remix really easily without having to kind of mess up our clean brush. And then that way we're having a cleaner application. So just a little pro tip there to try that out. All right, so what I did was I sectioned out, kind of you guys know if you've watched any of my partial highlight videos, I always like to kind of start right here at the apex and then kind of work my way down and then work my way forward. So we're gonna kind of do the same thing here. I'm just kind of sectioning out this little back section for her, but I'm actually gonna be working on the diagonal because I don't wanna go just straight across and do straight across foils because what would happen is then she would end up with kind of like a stronger line down here. We don't really want that. Um, we're okay with it seeing a little bit of disconnect, but I don't want it to be like a strong line and I also don't want it to grow out really harshly. So I'm actually gonna go in kind of diagonally and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I'm gonna do that. Then I also tore my foils in half so that we're working with smaller foils just to really attack a lot of these shorter hairs and get them in there really easily without having lots of foils all over the place. So in this back section, we're gonna be working with smaller foils. All right, so to get myself on the diagonal, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little triangle section here and I'm going to kind of part this away and I'm gonna be kind of working inwards here because that kind of follows the natural shape of the head. So that's how we're gonna do this little back section. And then when we get to the front, I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna do there. So I'm just gonna start here. Um, and you guys can see she has like no lightness in these hairs here, but I'm kind of working with like more baby light sectioning. And instead of doing my foils, like most people would fold them, uh, fold the foil down like this way, right? They would fold it like this. You can totally do that. But if you've watched any of my foiling videos, I actually foil backwards. And this is gonna allow me to kind of work this way without a ton of foils in the way. So I'm gonna foil backwards here and um, show you guys what I'm doing. And you guys can see how that little section kind of fell out of my foil there. And that's why I like using this brush particularly. This is the brush from Framar. This is kind of their medium sized brush. But you guys can see I didn't have to go pick up my comb to kind of get that little section. I kind of just did it here with my brush, which is kind of really nice um, to be able to do that. Especially when you're working in more detailed areas like this, it's really, really helpful. So you guys are gonna see, I'm kind of doing a little bit of a pivoting, um, kind of pivoting here until we get to here, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay. 
Now it's more comfortable for you guys to not foil backwards. You totally can foil this way. Um, again, you guys can see and easily switch off if you want to. Now this angle is getting a little bit easier for me to actually foil down. So totally what works for you. And that's the cool thing about these techniques that I'm teaching you guys is really what kind of works for you and um, your dexterity. I think a lot of us have different dexterities and what we've done before. So you guys can see I'm not folding it this way. Um, it's, it's nice to be able to be flexible with that. So um, don't stress about it too much. You can kind of play around with whatever works for you. So I'm gonna finish up this section and then we're gonna go to the other side. All right, so what I did was I kind of went from that pie section and I'm just gonna show you guys with my comb. I kind of did pivoting radials all the way till we're about here. And now we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Now, just the way that her calic worked out, um, she has a few more foils on this side than she will on this side, but this is kind of how her hair was flowing. So I just kind of went with it. So I'm gonna kind of now work my way down this way. Uh, I'm gonna take that little pie section to start out here and kind of just go down this way. You guys are gonna see me actually foil this one down. And the reason why is her calic was sticking out. Did you guys see that? It was kind of fluffing up and kind of getting in my way. So if I foiled backwards the normal way that I would, it would have tended to want to stick to that foil. So, you know, again, this is flexible. I'm just foiling it down. It kind of just it worked for that section. So do what works for you and for the client's hair. will say when you are foiling short hair like this, especially in this area where you have calyx and hair is not really quite cooperating with you the way that you want to, is sometimes your foils, they might look a little messy. And you know what? That's okay. Um, things like that happen, especially when you're doing short hair. So yeah, my foils aren't as clean as they normally are, but I'm still getting the job done and I'm still really being precise and clean with my sectioning and all that. So even though from the outside, they may not look 100% clean, they're kind of a little crinkly, that's all right. I know that inside that they're very clean and that all my sections are still really clean. It just is because we're working kind of on the round of the head here and we're working with these short hairs. So um, if that starts to happen to you or you start to stress about it, like, man, my foils don't look very clean, that's totally normal and uh, you're not doing anything wrong. In fact, you're probably doing it really right. All right, I'm gonna finish up this little section here and then we're gonna head up to the front. finished our back section and now what I'm gonna do especially because she does have a little bit wider of a set of a head than maybe some clients some clients you might be able to do a mohawk we're actually gonna split her hair down the middle and we're gonna do side by side and this is gonna allow me to kind of have it a little bit more diagonal um, again so that it's not just like straight across we don't want it to look like train tracks or chunky so we're gonna do diagonal kind of going down this way and then same thing on the other side Now you guys can see I started that diagonal back I'm going to show you with my comb. I kind of started, not diagonal back, just diagonal. And then I kind of pivoted and now I'm going pretty much straight all the way through because now we're getting around to kind of her little baby bangs that she has up here. So all I've been doing is just basically going all the way straight. Sometimes I'm doing slices, sometimes I'm doing weaves, but because I'm doing them so, so fine, um, the slices aren't going to look like straight up lines, right? You know, because we're doing them really kind of fine. Um, more baby lights. You definitely want to be careful when you are doing short hair like this that you're not taking too thick of sections. Um, it'll be a lot easier to manage doing thinner, finer sections such as like baby lights or microweaves, whatever you want to call it, than trying to just grab a bunch of hair and stick it in the foil. So just being really aware of that, it's actually going to make your job a lot easier and you're going to have much more desirable results. So I'm just going to kind of finish this section going all the way forward and then we will go to the other side. One other thing I want to mention too is I've been folding the foils just on this edge because we are going to have to do foils on this side and if we have foils that are overlapping into the section it gets really really messy. So I'm actually not folding the foils on this side, you totally could, just I don't think it's necessary, but I am folding it on this side to keep that parting really clean. Alright, 
so now we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna kind of go pivoting and then just straight through until we get to that little bang section. And uh, a lot of these little hairs are kind of falling out. That's part of the other section, so I'm not even gonna worry about them. I'm just gonna start tackling, um, kind of leaving this little triangle out and going from here. Now sometimes these foils right up in here, this section can feel a little funky because it can feel kind of tight in there. So I am folding my foils down because obviously I can't go backwards. So again, when you're working with short hair because you are working in such tight little spots, you do have to adjust sometimes. And that's why um, I kind of almost make it up as I go. Obviously I have my sectioning, I have a plan of what I'm doing, but I make it up for the client's head shape and where the foils are just kind of falling. Um, I don't necessarily like, oh, I have to foil backwards or I have to foil like this because I don't want to have that pressure on myself. So um, like I said, I do have an idea of what I'm doing, but also being flexible with it. So we're just finishing up her little bang section here. She did want it to be a little tiny bit brighter in the front, so um, we're going just slightly, slightly, slightly closer foils. But um, if you guys have watched any of my other foiling videos, highly recommend you do, because I do really tight, um, very precise foils here in the front. And so one thing I would mention before even kind of attempting to do short hair, it is definitely a little trickier just because you're working with shorter hair, but it's not impossible. It totally can be easy. You just gotta practice. And so one way to practice on even your everyday clients is those little short baby hairs that I teach you guys how to do in my partial highlighting and in my uh, full highlighting tutorials. Um, these are gonna be kind of the hairs that you have already around the face already. So if you're really good at doing that detail work around the face with your regular clients, doing short hair is gonna be a lot easier for you. So highly recommend that, and that's something that you can practice all the time, like I said, on your regular clients. So um, we're just going in, getting these little guys right here. Now she does have these really short ones that she kind of cut underneath little micro bangs. We are not gonna foil those because they might look a little funky. So we're gonna leave those, uh, but I'm just kind of getting these longer hairs that are laying over and finishing up this little section here. So those are our finished foils. You guys can see this entire section I actually did foil down. So you guys can see the foils are kind of going this way. These ones I did foil backwards and then I foiled down in the front. Again, that's just what worked for me for her head shape and kind of the way her hair was flowing. Um, obviously when I foiled down, I folded the foils so they're a little cleaner looking on this side than on the other side. But just to recap, what we did was in the back, we did kind of pivoting radials all the way around the back, kind of going in towards that middle. And then from here we did diagonal and then kind of worked our way straight all the way through. And the cool thing is about doing short hairs, you don't gotta do the sides. So we're gonna let her process and then I'll show you guys what it looks like once we're done processing. All right, so we're gonna mix up her kind of overlay color. I'm gonna be kind of doing a mix of some of our Joico Intensity. We got bronze, we got some mob quartz, some peach, and a little bit of rose. I love these tones. Um, another one that they have that I absolutely love is their rose gold uh, shade. We just don't have it here. So I'm gonna be kind of mixing these guys up. I wanna do a custom mix for her. So I'm basically going to be doing, I call it like squirt, and just keep playing around with the color. So I like to start with my lightest shade. So I'm gonna start with our rose here. We don't need to mix up a ton because she doesn't have a ton of hair. And then I'm also gonna throw in some peach here. And I like to start with the lighter shades and then work darker. Now the one funky thing about this color line is it does have a little bit of um, some glitter in it, which is kind of cute, kind of funky. Um, but you guys can see this is like really, really bright. Like this is like I would consider like Barbie pink. And so I actually really like to mix in some of this mauve quartz and bronze, their metallic series, to kind of deepen it up a little bit. So we'll do a squirt of that in there. And honestly, a lot of people ask me what my formulas are for my rose golds. It's honestly just mixing it up until you get the right shade and then just swatching it. Um, so I obviously have kind of an idea of what I'm doing, but I do like to custom mix all of my rose gold shades because sometimes one client wants a little bit more peach, one wants a little bit deeper, one wants a little bit more rose gold. So um, yeah, so I'm just kind of custom mix these. I really like how this is looking. Also taking into consideration, she's got a lot of warmth in there still left over, so that's gonna play into our final shade. 
So once I kind of have an idea of like a shade that I like, what I like to do is I take a little bit, I also take like a white paper towel and I'm just gonna kind of swatch it out on there. And knowing that this is white, she's got a little bit more warmth in there so it will come up a little bit more warm. I'm gonna add a little bit more pink to this and I just keep doing that until I come up with a shade that I like. So I brought her back over to the chair and we did dry her hair just because I wanted to make sure that the color really soaked in really well. So I'm just kind of applying it really quickly here, um, just getting it all the way through and then I'll brush it through with like a comb just to make sure that we get it all in there. And here is our final result, you guys. I just love how blended it looks and how we still got so much dimension in there and obviously love the rose gold color. So many of you guys asked for my formula on that, so I wanted to share that with you guys here and that's kind of what she wanted. So anyways, I hope that you guys aren't intimidated to try out this technique. It obviously makes such beautiful results and I really hope that you try it out. All right guys, I hope that this video was helpful for you. Like I said, I know that this is something that I used to struggle with. I know it's something that can be a little scary and so I hope that this video broke it down for you and gave you an easy message of how you can start highlighting your clients hair or those clients that just want a little bit more dimension you can do it for them so if you like this video go ahead and let me know in the comment box I would love to hear how this video helped you and I would love to know if you have a client that you're already thinking of doing this technique on I think that that's really cool if you can implement this into your clientele right away also if you don't already follow me on Instagram or you've never taken the time to say hello go ahead and send me a DM on Instagram letting me know that you watched this video and tell me what you think about it. I would love to hear your thoughts and love to hear if you liked it. Last but not least, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, make sure to do it now. I release tons of videos like this every single week and you're not gonna wanna miss out on them because it's amazing, free education, and it'll help you take your career to the next level. All right guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.